Taylor Lorenz. Thank you for joining us at Tumblr today. Thank you so much for having me. So you have a book that just came out. It's called Extremely Online. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, um, it's about basically like the first kind of 20 years of the social internet and the rise of the content creator ecosystem um, and kind of how it became, well, basically like a half a trillion dollar industry um, and sort of changed our media landscape. And I love that it starts off with blogging and specifically with mommy bloggers because they were such a huge new thing on the internet in the early 2000s. Yeah, they were such internet pioneers and I feel like they don't get enough credit for what they were doing. They were very much the first influencers, content creators, whatever you want to call it. They were kind of the first average people to start really building brands on the internet and then monetizing those brands. The monetization aspect is really interesting to me because like like you write, you know, there are certain bloggers who got very big in the mommy blogging blogosphere mm -hmm. and when they started, you know, running ads, was there backlash to that? There was so much backlash. Um, it was kind of crazy. I went back and I found um, Heather Armstrong, who's kind of the most famous mommy blogger. Um, in 2004, she put ads on her blog and wrote this extremely apologetic post that was basically like, this has become a full-time job for me. Like, I'm just going to put a couple banner ads. I hope you guys are OK with it. And people literally went ballistic on her. <laughs> They tried, said she should have her children taken away and um, just all of this horrible stuff. And it was a lot of it was from actually the traditional media as well as kind of like Internet commenters that were just really angry at the notion. Um, yeah, that, that that women would try and make money online, I guess. You mentioned traditional media. I, I feel like a running theme is traditional media trying to push back or adjust to the changing internet landscape, whether that was, you know, blogging points, talking points memo, um, or to, you know, the different various social media platforms that have come around and come and gone over the years. Yeah, it's it's so funny. Um, it just, the media really hasn't changed that much even. Um, it was funny to kind of reread, but they were really, really hostile in the aughts to bloggers specifically. I think because bloggers were writers and that was kind of maybe threatening, um, but it, it was a lot of like sort of hand wringing over blogs and whether, you know, we can trust anything on the internet these days. And it's just so funny because the internet back then was way more reliable than it is now, I feel like even. I mean, I don't know. Um, but um, but yeah, it, uh, I sort of talk about the history of blogging and how these bloggers pioneered these revenue streams and built audiences and um, really upended a lot of different industries from fashion to beauty to um, sports and um, everything, obviously news as well. Where, where do you see the current state of blogging? You know, we are a part of Automatic. Automatic owns WordPress and a bunch of wonderful other divisions, but we... Um, we at Tumblr, you know, we're a blogging and social media platform, kind of marrying the two different kind of internet things. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Um, well, as you know, I got my start on Tumblr. I love it. Um, I think, I, I think, I mean, people still blog. Like, it's a misconception that blogs are totally dead um, because people do still have like personal blogs and, pers and and stuff like that. But I think everyone has been ushered into the social media world where there's a lot of like um, consistency where it's like, oh, we'll go here, so, you know, so go on Facebook, go on Instagram because that's where everyone else is. And it's very hard if you have your own blog, I will say, to get distribution. And that's what a lot of people want. Um, but I think, I mean, there's always going to be a, a space for sort of written content. Um, a lot of people also talk about the rise of newsletters and that kind of bringing a resurgence. But I think, and I think the reason people have sort of what they like about newsletters and other, I don't, I don't know if WordPress lets you do this too, but it's like a way to kind of mass distribute your stuff. So you're not just like publishing it on, it, you know, your own blog and then it goes nowhere. You're an OG Tumblr girl. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite part about Tumblr like, or your favorite thing that has happened on Tumblr? Oh my God, like favorite event on Tumblr? Yeah. I mean, well, I really liked being on Tumblr during, do you remember when DashCon happened? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There was this like failed convention. I don't even know what year that was, maybe 2013 or something. Something around there, yeah. It was back in the day. And um, I don't even remember sort of like what it was for, but there was this like infamous uh, picture of this very sad ball pit. The, the ball pit. And I, I love, you know, I will say like some of the, my favorite moments online are when there's some, like honestly the, the, the fire fest as well was a fun day. Mm -hmm. Like it's like, 
when things are just going awry and not, not you know I hate anybody like losing money or whatever but it, it's just yeah it was fun online and the I, chaos chaos I also remember Tumblr I mean yeah there's been a lot of like fun sort of like pop culture moments on Tumblr I think too yeah the most recent one is um that I love and I'm obsessed with is Goncharov from last year which is a fake Martin Scorsese movie. Oh my God, wait, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was it was such a fun like example of like Tumblr as a community just running with a joke and yeah. like committing to a bit. And it got to the point where like Martin Scorsese's daughter did a TikTok where she like showed a text that she asked him about it and he knew what it was. He was like, oh yeah, I remember making that movie. <laughs> it's chaotic and super fun. I love it. I love those like inside jokes that happen, you know, between exactly. members, like just with the community. It's it's one of my favorite things. Is there anything since the book has been published um, or since, you know, you had to turn it in and is there anything since you completed the book that has happened on the internet that you think, oh, I wish I wish I had been able to write about that? Honestly, no, not really. Only because I feel like this is, we're entering into a different era of the internet. How so? Um, just, there's a lot more chaos. Like, I, I think I write about the rise of this specific sort of model of social media, of uh, broadcast-based social media, where it's like one to many. Everything is default public. Everything is default permanent. And I don't think people like that anymore, actually. I think people want to spend time with more private, private communities. They want more ephemeral media. Or they want algorithms to deliver stuff sort of directly to the audience that, you know, they want to reach. And then also just, like, with Elon taking over Twitter and, like, the death of that and what it spawned. Like, I just think that it's a little bit of a transition phase. Mm -hmm. So my book ends in kind of 2022. Um right not too long after the pandemic happened and kind of everyone became online yeah but i do think that the next sort of 10 years of the social internet might look a little bit different the anonymity is interesting to me because one of my favorite things about tumblr is that it can be as anonymous as you want it to be you know like you don't have to you can choose your own url you don't have to tie your name to it there there's so much of the internet feels very performative in a way that on tumblr it feels very much not performative it's very there for people to like connect with other people who are passionate about the same things that they are which is i think a a really nice kind of like breath of fresh air especially to younger people yeah um gen z you know we have a huge percentage of our of our daily active users are gen z and and we really see them coming to a place where they can just be themselves yeah which is really rare on the internet I think especially I mean I saw Elon talking about rolling out like a real name policy on Twitter which I think would be horrible like I and and on TikTok it's like you kind of have to put your face I know some people don't put their face on TikTok but like I think there is a lot of pressure to put your face on the internet on all these platforms and make video content and you can't it's very hard to be anonymous um and so yeah I appreciate that part of Tumblr as well yeah it's fun it's just a fun place (laughs) yeah well I just think also like you there's it's so important to have anonymity on the internet you know just for self-expression and also just because like we all have this like growing digital footprint everywhere and I mean yeah I wish I used a pseudonym now like if I could do it all over again I would use a pseudonym (laughs) on like everything (laughs) right right yeah the pressure to to be yourself and be present on all of the platforms can be exhausting. Yeah. Well, Taylor, thank you so thank much you for so much. coming to the office. Thank and you for having me. Everyone, go check out Extremely Online. It's available now from your local bookseller. Um, thank you so much. Yeah, I hope people love it. And there's a bunch about Tumblr in there. So Yes, indeed there is. The one yeah. chart in the whole book is a Tumblr chart. Yeah, the F yeah one. Yes. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you.